Uh, some people call me the clan man and some people call me the old geezer. So that's <laughs> I grew up in Oyster. My dad was a waterman. We ate seafood five days a week. I really ate good growing up. The first one they stuck in my mouth, I was probably couldn't even walk. <laughs> but I don't remember. But growing up on the river, you know, it's to me the oyster tastes like my childhood. You know, tastes tastes like what I love about the river. Uh, they can really bring somebody back to a time or a place with you know their unique flavor. It's it's an experience. I like to say that uh, tasting your first shellfish, it's evocative of going down to the beach and dipping your toes in the water. It brings back all those childhood memories of playing in the water and being on the beach. The oyster is extremely iconic with Chesapeake. Chesapeake actually stands for the Great Shellfish Bay. It, is, it was so abundant for many centuries until mankind just, actually, it actually took mankind several centuries to deplete the natural resource. The lifeblood of, of folks around us growing up was um, always farming in the summertime, oystering in the wintertime, and it's just always been around us. Well, the biggest change was you know, the, the seafood on the eastern shore almost dying off because of disease. But with uh, agriculture, especially with the oysters coming back, there's more opportunity to, to keep uh, you know, local people employed and uh, helping the economy of the shore here. I represent uh, a thousand small farms from Maine to Florida, but collectively we produce about $114 million worth of product. More recently, we've experienced a really neat renaissance of oyster farming. We do just under 100 million clams and oysters, uh, approximately 15 million uh, cultured oysters, and uh, approximately 20 million uh, wild oysters. For 10 years now, we've been doing aquaculture in the Chesapeake, which is different than how we traditionally um, farmed oysters in the past. And that's really seen a huge benefit and in increase in, in oyster population overall because of it. We decided, hey, let's, let's go for it. But at the time, we had no land, no boats, no equipment, no, no knowledge. So we had to start from scratch. We, we learned about aquaculture and the benefits that it had in farming oysters. Are there a filter feeder, you know, they're filtering, uh, you know, the algae and sediments out of the water and uh, if we keep growing, we'll help make the bay cleaner. We became aware of this ocean acidification issue just a few years ago and immediately we're very concerned that it was going to pose a tremendous challenge for our industries. We heard first about ocean as acidification when we learned that there were some huge issues in the, um, the hatcheries out west. So one is that we hate to see fellow growers suffer, uh, which is definitely happening. And then two, when will it impact us? If current trends continue, we're going to have very real challenges, both in the shellfish industry, uh, certain other marine organisms are already showing that their shells are getting thinner. So it poses great challenges on many levels. And what I see is, is uh, communities and states especially are taking steps to address this. Helping politicians understand the issues, helping them understand how important shellfish are to the local economy, how many jobs are tied to the shellfish production industry out in Washington state. And the state stepped up and made some serious investments in research to help address the problem. There are several families on the shore here that kind of pass the baton from one generation to the other. Young Chad Ballard III is fifth generation. I think we got a bright future with him. It's kind of like me being the old geezer passing the baton to the younger generation and they're off and running. I'm gonna get to go fishing one of these days. <laughs>